Today I'm making watercolor bookmarks. I'm using regular watercolor, 140 pound paper, and I'm just going to tear the paper into the right size rather than cut with scissors because it's going to leave a nice rough edge. So these ones are approximately two inches by six inches and I'm just going to tape the paper down on a masonite board so the paper won't stretch. The first one is a underwater scene. Keep in mind this video is done in fast speed. You can always slow down the speed in the video settings. So I'm putting little drops of rubbing alcohol to make the bubbles. This is 70% alcohol and that will be the water part. And then for the seabed, I'm just putting down blobs of color. So I have ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, little dabs of green, little dabs of red. Uh, make sure the the paint is pretty saturated but also quite liquidy and then very quickly scrunch up some saran wrap and press it down onto the wet paint. Now we have to let it dry so I'm going to the next one and just plopping down some magenta, purple, Payne's gray and I want to do an all over design very abstract with blobs of color adding some blue as well and then quickly again push down the saran wrap while it's still wet. We're going to let those dry. Now for this one I'm doing a more nature type scene using very earthy colors so I'm using different shades of green. You can tone down the greens by adding a little bit of red or orange also using a bit of Payne's Gray and adding some water as I go to blur out the paint a little bit. I'll link up a playlist of watercolor tutorials in the description to show you with more detail some of these techniques. I'm just going to the next one do a wet on wet technique where I wet the paper first and then go in with my colors. I'm doing them in a more horizontal format. Just putting the separate colors in. I have some ochres and greens and then some richer greens and I'm just laying down the color into the wet surface. Also got some Payne's Gray there. That's one of my favorite colors is the Payne's Gray. Add a bit of water if you need to blend the colors in together a little bit more. So we just add water as we need. You can dry your brush and lift color as well. And you can use a paper towel to dab up some of the extra paint if you like. So once the first one is dry, I'm going in with a thinner brush. It could still be a little damp too if you want it a little bit more blurred the lines going with a finer brush and doing sort of stylized trees just with a very fine brush and a little bit of either brown or Payne's Gray, any darker color that you like. So they're just like little wiggly trees, very stylized. It's a very abstract piece. And then dab up any extra color if you need to with the paper towel. So once it's fully dry, it might take a couple of hours, you're going to peel off the saran wrap and then peel off the tape, pulling the tape away from the paper. So very slowly pull the tape off to remove the painted pieces. And like I said, be very careful to pull the tape away from the piece so it doesn't rip. There you go. So now I want to add a fish to the underwater scene, but I'll need a more opaque paint. So I'm going to draw it out quickly with the pencil, just a light sketch. And then I'm using acrylic paint to do the fish. 
So you want to build up your colors. I'm using yellows, oranges, reds to do the fish. So I'm using a finish brush and again keep in mind this video is done on a fast speed. You can go to the playback settings if you want to watch it more slowly for more detail. So the acrylic paint works well to be more opaque, to be able to paint over the background. I've also done this type of design where I do a collage fish or even paint the fish on a separate paper and glue it on top. The other thing you could do is block out the shape of the fish with drawing gum and then once it's dry, the background's dry, you remove the drawing gum and you can paint the fish with watercolor. So there's many different possibilities for this project to put the fish on the background. I'm just going and putting my layers on very carefully to see what colors I need. Going with a pretty fine brush and then we're going to bring it down to the tail. You can add water if you want the paint to flow a little more. Make sure your brush has a fine tip. And then bring the paint down for the tail. I did this fish in sort of like a turned position, not, not necessarily just straight on and then do the other fin at the top. You could do little lines to give the effect of transparency. And you can build it up. Go in with a, a wet brush if you want to just blend the, the lines a little bit. You could go in with some water or very light color. And then we're going to do the bottom ones. Try to vary the size of your lines. You can push the brush harder to make a thicker line and lift the brush to make a thinner line. And just go in to do all your details. Take your time with this. Just build up the fish slowly compare it to an image. I like to paint from an image. I find it much easier. So I just found images on Canva or on Google. And now we're going to do a few little lines to give it a little more detail. Get some water when you need to blend out the color. Get some more yellows, more oranges, building up slowly the colors to make the fish look more solid and three-dimensional. And then we could go in with some lighter whitish yellow to do some highlights so it looks more like there's scales on there. Put a little bit of highlights in the fins, in the tail, and then you could go in with a brown, sort of a uh, burnt umber to do more shadowy details. You want to get some nice contrasts of light and dark in there. So yeah, just go in with, could even be a diluted uh, brown color just to do some blending to make the shadows. And just keep working on it until you're happy with how it looks. I'll link up some other videos too with some underwater scenes so you have more uh, details and more ideas. And then after you could go in and do some seaweed. So I just have some different shades of green. Some are brighter, some are darker. and more of a transparent type of green. Looks like they're flowing in the water. You can do some seaweed in the background and then do a little bit of blending in the seabed as well. Could use some greenish browns for that. 
and there's your fish. Now for this one, I've gone in with some India ink to follow some of the lines of the background that I did with the saran wrap. So rather than use a Sharpie, which you could do, I like to use a brush with the ink and that way you can get a nice variety of lines. You can also use watercolor pens that have a chiseled end and you would get more or less the same effect with that. The idea is to have some parts of the line thinner and some thicker depending on how much pressure that you put on the brush. So just follow as many of the lines as you want. You don't need to define all of those lines. If you do see imagery within those lines, go for it. Otherwise you can do it quite abstract, which this ends up being quite an abstract design. And then I thought it would be nice to paint the borders. So I just went in with the ink and paint it around the outside on the borders to give it a nice black outline. And I didn't tape off the edge. I guess I could have taped off the edge, but I just went really slowly with the brush to get it as straight as possible and just painted right to the edge of the paper.